All right, thanks for staying with us now. January 17 is customer service day, and this is the day to pause and thank all your customers for their business. For any organization, whether based on service or product, you must be grateful to the people who honor and patronize your business. I wish Uti were here, because she's the customer, customer experience <laughs> queen. <laughs> but hey, customers are the best. Mm -hmm. Because they are the ones that keep small businesses alive. They're the yeah. ones that keep it flowing. I mean, the, 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 the technological advancement that we have experienced over the years has really, really changed and transformed how businesses are, um, are being run. Oh, yeah. You know, because before, you just have to maybe go somewhere. Now, so everybody, you can see that small businesses are paying that extra attention. Yeah. If it is immediate, there's somebody I order my gadgets from on Instagram, you know, my laptop case, my everything. Mm -hmm. Immediately you send message, but he's already responding. If you send him in the middle of the night, they are responding. <laughs> they will deliver immediately. Yeah. They deliver before you pay, you know? Mm -hmm. So everybody's putting that extra, you know, just to make sure that the customer is satisfied because truly customer is king. Yeah. So, I mean, any little thing you can do as a small business to keep the business going, right? So we're going to be discussing customer on Friday. So just to help you <laughs> to start the year off on a good note, but hey, Quickly, what do we find in the news? All right. I start with you. <laughs> you're looking at me. Because <laughs> I'm not sure. So, um, my new story. Okay. Well. Jennifer, are you ready for us? She's searching. Okay, so um, for me today, Ogun denies article access to stadium for rally. Mm. So basically, PDP had made a request to the MKO Abiola Stadium on um, on the 3rd of January, and they wanted to use the stadium on the 19th of January this year for a rally, and they didn't get any response. So they had said that, um, I think they said in their letter, they had previously made a request April last year to use the stadium but for some reason, they had not gotten any response. But then this time around, they were denied. So what the state government in Ogun State said was that they were doing a major renovation at the stadium. So no rally um, can be held at that time. But apparently, the Sunday before that response, or before the letter was sent back to PDP, they said that um, a football match was held at that particular stadium. So if a football <laughs> match was held at that particular stadium just the Sunday before the letter came in, mm. how come you're saying that a major renovation is currently happening? Mm. So apparently mm. it's not sitting well. APC is a what state now? It's an APC state. state yeah. And, you know, so I mean... These things are the things you should, they should get used to it by now. Yeah. I mean, there was a state that refused Peter B or something for mentioning the stadium. He went into the streets now. I can't remember what state it was now. He went into the streets. So just be be creative because you should you should anticipate things like this of as any political party. Mm -hmm. um, Norma, what did you find for us in the news? Is Norma there? Okay, today is... Uh, yes, I'm here. Well, go ahead. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So, um, I found something rather disturbing in the news today about a man who was arrested uh, on US TV after a toddler filmed waving a gun. Now, the man has been uh, arrested in Indiana after his four-year-old son appeared to be wearing a nappy, was seen waving a gun. His name is Shane Osborne and he's 45 and he was charged with neglect after the neighbors had reported a child, the child in the hallway carrying what they believed to be a handgun. And for some of us who were able to watch this video, it was very disturbing to see, I don't know about you, but if you have handled a, a handgun before, you would know how heavy it is. So for this child to be waving a gun that was loaded, I think it had about 15 rounds in it, but it wasn't uh, uh, activated. But that was disturbing because a child not knowing about the consequences of holding it, and obviously would have seen an adult using it for him to be able to do what he was doing with it, already shows sign that this child has been living in an endangered environment. 
and um, it just tells you all the more how unsafe the the world that we live in today is. Uh, well, the man has been arrested, and um, uh, he will be charged to court. And um, it's just a call for parents to continue to be vigilant because Absolutely. a lot is going on, and anything can happen with one moment of distraction. Anything can happen. So that that's the news that I found Absolutely. today. Quite disturbing, but that's what it is. Hmm. Okay, well, it is well. <laughs> All right, <Wow>. NJ. <laughs> So uh, my new story is the fact that um, Lagos leads as, um, as Nigeria reports 42 new COVID cases. Oh. So um, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed 42 new COVID infection in the country in the last two weeks. Lagos State reported the highest number of cases with 24 new infections within the period from December 31st to January <coughs> excuse me, to January 6th. So um, they have also confirmed that the country has recorded, you know, between um, January 7th and 13th, we recorded 29 new cases. And these new cases were reported from about 15 from Lagos as usual. What it did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> FCT had about five, Kano had four, uh, Nasarawa three, Kaduna one, and Plato one. The new cases take the country's total um, total COVID-19 uh, infections to 266,492. It also reports that the country has reported 3,155 deaths so far, while 200, uh, 259,858 cases have been discharged across 36 states of the FCT. You know, all of a sudden there was a wave of flu. Even me, I caught yeah. it. So God yeah. will just preserve us. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Quickly. so what I found in the news was um, this um, disqualification of Peter Obi. I don't understand it really. But yeah, the National Rescue Movement has dragged the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 general election, Peter Obi, to court over alleged possession of dual citizenship. Uh, the plaintiff is praying to the, the plaintiff is praying in the court for the order of the disqualification of OB from the presidential race on the ground of breach of the 1999 constitution and asks for an order of perpetual injunction. The truth is, I don't see any reason why Peter, I mean, fair enough why he should be disqualified for dual citizenship, but um, the APC presidential candidate has had so many scandals to his name. Mm. And we don't see anybody, we don't even hear anybody talking about it, mm. actually. We don't hear anybody questioning him. We don't hear anybody saying, I mean, asking the right questions because really, Peter Hobby is running a good race, mm. if we're being honest, for several reasons. But this is not enough reason to disqualify his entire work. <laughs> I, I don't think see, this is enough. See, see, I don't think. I don't see think. See, Daniel, if I say you don't know Senate politics, <laughs> I mean, but then people will dig up any dirt on you. But it is actually wrong. It's against the law. I haven't read the story. Is it true that he has dual citizenship? Well, That's what we should question. Mm -hmm. Because you know, I mean, but wait, then again, is he the only one that most has dual thank you. No, exactly. Because most, I was just coming there because yeah. most Nigerians have dual citizenships, right? I mean, if you really want to be fair, but you see, it's not a fair game. Politics is not Politics a fair game. They will look for game, any dirt enough. against you. But because again, if, you're running, that that's what yeah, if you're running for office, you shouldn't actually be mm -hmm. uh, a dual citizen. You should actually just be only a citizen of Nigeria. Of Nigeria. Yeah. They shouldn't attach any other passport to your name. Right. I mean, but hey, how many of these people truly are just, you know, just Nigerians? Mm -hmm. All right, so my what's in the news is actually interesting. Um, because it's somehow tied to what we're discussing today. The chairman of the of INEC, uh, Mahmoud Yakubu, says 2023 elections is an election for the young people in Nigeria. And um, he says so because he was breaking down the voters' registration, and he, he says the record shows that it will be highly dominated by the Nigerian youth. Um, over, he says over 600k eligible voters collected their PVCs in Lagos alone within the last month, right? Mm -hmm. And he said a total of 93.4 million registered voters in Nigeria, out of which 37 million, that's about 39%, 
are young people between the ages of 18 and 34. Mm. He then went on to say, then 33.4 million, or you can put it at 35.3 percent, are between the ages of 35 and 49. Mm. So mm. in total, the percentage of young voters, right, mm. comes to about 75.39 percent. Wow. So truly, <coughs> that is why they will go and tell you that Peter Obi is a dual citizen, because again, yes. it seems like the, the feedback from the streets you know, on the streets, a lot of young people put are up. putting their weight, they're yeah, going they're to go and get their PVCs, yeah. you know, doing all sorts of things just, you know, to, to, uh, for, for Peter Obi. And thankfully, they've extended the collection of the PVC to end on the 29th of January. And, you know, um, so I'm excited about the, um, the, the wave. Like Jennifer Riley said when we opened the show, there's just something fresh in the air happening, right? So we're hoping that, you know, it can actually translate into... I think Nigerians... Yes. Nigerians sending a message. To that point I'm, just where even we are tired. In, I'm just even interested in us sending a message mm -hmm. to our leaders, not so much of you know, whoever yeah. emerges. Mm -hmm. It's for them to know that we truly have the power to select or elect anybody. True. Yeah. So, but we'll take a break now. When we come back from the break, we want to discuss um, the topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back.